How can I introduce super synergy of United Heart and grow with contractors who are only concerned about the smaller leg? There are many people who are consumed by smaller and bigger legs. Here's what I think. Do you have star masters and royal masters in your bigger leg? If that's the case, it's indeed a much bigger leg. If you're on your way to imperial master, which follows after becoming a royal master and then a crown master, you should have several royal masters and star masters on both of your legs. Those who don't have any mastership holders, even on their bigger leg, should stop worrying about bigger or smaller legs. They have too little perspective on the atomy business and should stop behaving in such a ridiculous way. To me, one is a small leg and the other is a smaller leg. They are both small legs. That's the way you need to be thinking about this. Consider both of them as your smaller legs and continue doing your sponsoring work all the time. There's one thing that you must keep in mind. You have no idea when your current smaller leg might become your bigger leg. In this business, you never know when or with whom you may hit the jackpot. The conclusion is that you must care for both of your legs. Among many successful royal leaders, there have been many cases of smaller legs overtaking the bigger legs, and thus the tables have been turned many times. Sure. I understand paying more attention to the smaller leg as compensation is calculated based on that. That's totally natural. Still, you want to focus on both of them. Please keep this crucial fact in mind. Here's why I am telling you to invest interest in your bigger leg too. Later, when both of your legs finally become big, and you become a successful leader who is paid handsome compensation. When you're raking in money, if you aren't respected by your partners, your success is really only a half success. That's why. In addition to making a lot of money, you truly want to become a complete, respectful leader. When both of your legs are still little, you should never neglect your bigger leg. Both your small leg and your smaller leg must be well cared for. Got it? All right. Next question. I hear quite often, I'll make you a line. I'll take care of one line for you. What is the right way of doing a binary business and maintaining your organization? Well, what a good question this one is. I think I'll have to draw on the chalkboard to give you a concrete explanation. The best way to expand your business. Um, I believe that there's no such thing as a sure thing. I'll share with you what's been talked about frequently. It's something like this. I heard there's such a thing as a sponsor line. The sponsor line is also called the original line, which will be totally taken care of by the sponsor. Therefore, all you need to do is look after the B line. And the rest will naturally be taken care of. This person right here says the same thing to others. You just need to worry about one line. The rest is automatic. In that case, this person manages this line like this. And that person there nourishes the original line like this. 
This line here becomes another original line by this person, and that person there nurtures his original line and tells another to only worry about one line. At first glance, this really does sound like a great idea. That person over there goes on like this, and that person goes on like this, and this person goes on and on and on. And then this person succeeds, and this person succeeds, this person succeeds, this person succeeds, and then this person succeeds. Again, that person goes that direction. And with his original line, and he only worries about one line, this is what people think works. People hear that it's actually one-line marketing, which sounds a lot easier than doing binary marketing. It can be a very tempting proposition. This sounds so appealing that many people fall into that trap. This is why I will go over in detail what problems might be caused by doing it this way in the scope of Korea's network marketing history. These are potential problems such a practice can cause. Let's say person A was told one line would be taken care of and that he just needed to take care of his own line. Person A's line went down smoothly like this, since he only had to worry about one line. His organization expanded and grew in a very satisfying manner. Let's take a look from another sponsor's perspective up here. He should have a B-line over there, and sure, his B-line is formed like this. When the sponsor's line over here is doing well, would he add more people to this line? Or would he add more people over there to his B-line? Needless to say, adding more people to the B-line is more beneficial to him. If that occurs, the person who was concentrating on the line here, believing this line was big, and now the sponsor's line is faced with a totally unexpected situation. For that person, this line becomes the bigger leg, and the original line becomes the smaller leg. He was told that the sponsor's line was the original line and the bigger leg, and to focus on the other line. But now, he's faced with this kind of problem. In the end, the other sponsor and person A wind up fighting and risk destruction of the entire thing. In some severe cases, okay, I'm going to stick to this line. If you don't keep your word, I will destroy you. They become spiteful and the situation escalates to some very ugly destruction they wind up in a mutually harmful situation. Actually, that case happened when this person's line grew well. This person's line grew well, but he was told that the original line would be guaranteed. Still, this kind of problem couldn't be avoided. Another problem that can occur in this situation is that the original line grows well while your line doesn't. Since your line doesn't expand, you're not making any money, which creates even worse problems. Another lesson. This is not a smart way to start out. Between this well-balanced group, between this well-balanced group and this lopsided group over here, if the sales of both groups are the same, will group A or B bring more compensation to its members? Members of group A or members of group B? Naturally, the members of group B. 
And I'll tell you why. This person gets no compensation here, no compensation for this person, this person. There are many people who collect no compensation here. In the meantime, this person is compensated and this person and so on. And there are a lot more people who get compensation. The total sum of members' compensation is greater in this group, so they can grow, prosper together, and energize each other in the long run. In the meantime, this organization will not be able to weather the times because the members cannot reap what they sow. As you can see, doing business this way is inherently inefficient and relying on one line as the main line is not very desirable. Rather, when a sponsor and a partner gather their hearts and efforts together to foster a balanced organization, things will go much more smoothly. Another noteworthy thing uh, to remember in this case is that some people erroneously believe that they must fill up these empty spaces and link up the lines to make it look like a complete matrix. That's another common way to completely screw this up. In other words, you would frame your structure uniformly and number each spot, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. The sponsor would place newcomers in designated spots upon their entry order. This is another really dumb method of doing business. It's just really not that smart. Yeah, and it's bound for failure as well. You want to expand your organization in a balanced way. Like a tree, sprouting branches. You should let it grow in a natural way. Don't force yourself to fill every single line or try to make it into a perfect matrix. There's no need for that. None of these two methods are effective. As a part of developing your organization, you must have two lower masters on both of your legs. That's really the smartest way to go about this. For example, on your way to Diamond Master, you must have a sales master here and another sales master here. And like this, you must have two sales masters on each of your legs. In the case of rearing two sales masters here and two sales masters there, you can get in big trouble if one of them decides they're going to quit. This is why you want to set up a goal of fostering and nurturing as many mastership holders as you possibly can. Here is what you should really be doing. Find about four potential leaders strategically in each line of yours and devise a plan to succeed together and develop teamwork accordingly. The same goes for this line as well. When it is going down smoothly, you would meet someone here and you meet someone there that you'd love to form a successful team with. You will want to create a certain chemistry amongst yourselves so that you can share the same path and objectives. That doesn't mean that it's okay to neglect and dump these people over here. I don't mean that at all. For this person to do well, this line of his should go smoothly down here, and that line over there must go down as well. I'd like to ask you a question about what you should be doing to help this person here and that person there succeed. You should be overseeing the entire network in a comprehensive way to make this go round. However, once your organization is running, things can get too overwhelming for you. That's when the Atomy Success System comes in handy. You can't just handle everything on your own, so you should utilize our system with the Success Academy, one-day seminars, or center meetings held on a daily basis. 
You can lead them to those seminars, which will lead them to success for you. Does that make sense? Q&A with Dreamy Hangil Park. I hope this was again a useful time for you. Now, there's only one month left. Time sure does fly. Have a fruitful end quarter, and let's meet again in the new year with renewed energy.